everyone while we're getting our presentation up. My name's Pearl Null. I represent FNB, First National Bank, also known as the Flipper Nice Bank. <laughs> um, and Andrew is my partner from Bridgetown High, and I'm going to allow Andrew to introduce himself. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Andrew Winvogel, principal of Bridgestone High, just around the corner. Uh, first of all, I need to say the following also is that uh, it's my second time that I'm being part of this uh, process. Uh, in 2012-2013, uh, I was also invited to be part of uh, uh, PFP. And then uh, quite some time ago, they approached me again. Uh, to be part of the process. And I'm thank you, thankful for that opportunity. Uh, also, uh, I'm principal now at Bridgestone High for, for the past uh, 10 years. Very challenging. Uh, when I took over the school, I was very younger then. Uh, uh, when I took over the school, I was very young. And it was quite a challenge uh, when I walked into the school to uh, take over a school which was underperforming uh, according to the, the department, meaning that the school pass percentage was uh, lower than 40, 60 percent. And I said to myself, look, man, this is, 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 is this one of those things which I want to take on? And I took up that challenge years back and never looked back. And Today I can say that we average a pass percentage of 85 to 90% per year. <laughs> and just to add to that is that over the years, uh, our community school, they have delivered quite a number of uh, ex-students. For example, uh, Judge Aston Skippers was a learner of Bridgestone High. Cheryl Carolus was a learner of Bridgestone High. And so many other students. And with that in mind, we as a school, our main aim is to develop the youngsters. By doing so, we transforming our community. Not only Bridgestone, the community of Bridgestone, but our communities surrounding uh, the Bridgetown area. And I want to say also thank you for Paul to come on board as my partner. Uh, I'm going to hand over to her and I'm going to switch back again to myself. Again. Thank you, Andrew. Um, that picture that you see up, it's the valedictory in October that I attended of Bridgetown High. I know we are pressed for time, so I'll just go through this very quickly. <coughs> School was established in 1965 with only 18 learners. They now have 998 learners and 28 educators. So there's five classes per grade with 45 teachers, uh, 45 learners in a class, which you can imagine is very challenging. Um, so a couple of accolades. 2013, they were the winner in excellence in secondary school leadership. 2013. Mr. Winfogel was the run-up for the National Teachers Award in the Western Cape. 2015 winner in Circuit 3 for the best performing high school with a 97.9% grade 12 pass. 2014 to 2018 selected for Band Slam, the Band Slam at Grand West. And because the school's been doing so well in that, they have been asked to do it each year. Then Yolokazi Gizeli, who was also at Bridgetown High, um, had one of her short plays that she wrote was actually produced and screened on SABC, on the SABC channel. Milestones in the partnership. Um, we ran a life skills and mentorship program, not starting now in this particular partnership because the relationship with Bridgetown High has been longer than this particular partnership. And um, where we facilitated 
grade 11 learners over an eight-month period, teaching them various life skills, business skills, entrepreneurship skills. And because of our involvement, we won the Mail and Guardian Award for conducting a program that was encouraging entrepreneurship and life skills in, in learners. Then um, in last year, we ran a career guidance workshop, which was facilitated by Brainwaves, and we invited five of the grade 11 Bridgetown High learners as part of a Saturday four-hour workshop. The feedback from that was there were some learners who were also in grade 12 who said that that workshop was so insightful that by the time they were in grade 11 and 12, they actually didn't know which path they wanted to take. So Brainwaves is something that for the high schools, it's, it's a program that you guys can can get onto as well, and then take a girl child to work that is that is ongoing. We be job shadow at the FNB offices. Be my clicker, please. <laughs> okay, then um, milestones continued. We assisted with opening bank accounts. It's, it's it's amazing how some kids don't know how to use an ATM, what online banking is about, and so on. And then we also this is ongoing corporate massages for the educators. It's a 15-minute massage with your clothes on. So, because um, <laughs> some people have not experienced massages at all. And um, while they're there, we have our FNB volunteers. I have one of them in the room today who actually oversee the classes while the teacher's having their time out. Click. Go, go there. Um, we have created contract work for ex Bridgetown High learners, particularly those who are studying events management, because that is my core role in FNB. I'm the events manager for the province. Um, so there's various mentorship programs that goes on around that. And then the lady, the girl in the middle, in about four years ago, she was in that LSM program. She was she's she's Yolokazi, the person who wrote the short play. And um, she was in grade eleven. And she stood up on that day and she said, she wants to be like me one day, grade 11. She was 16 years old. Last year, I was invited to come and talk at, the, at an events conference for CPUT where she was studying. She was a third year student. Um, and I was so amazed. She had that vision in mind and she was studying events management. And there she was in doing her third year. And then... She graduated last year as well, fourth year in events management. So she had a goal and she, and she reached it. That picture over there was just taken last week. We had um, the band of, um, they run a, an amazing theater school, performing arts school at Bridgetown High with very talented musicians and drama students. Um, I'm not going to go through all of that, but yeah, I've had opportunities to address the staff, attend the SGB and so on. The challenges. So Bridgetown High is one of the oldest schools on the Cape Flats, yet they don't have a school hall. The picture that you see there is the kids sitting in the quad on their bums. So when the weather is, is crappy, they can't have assembly. Um, it's a struggle during the exams because there's no hall for the exams to take place. So they have to shift kids and open up the double classrooms to have matric exams. And the performing arts group, they don't have a space for showcasing their work. That's a stage that they've put up in the quad where they're doing that. So a very big mission of mine is to, is to address this matter. Why? The school's been there since 1965. Why don't they still not have a hall? What do we need to do to get a hall up and going? So um, we have various discussions, discussions with alumni around that at the moment. And we've got a couple of plans in place. I'll get to that in the next slide as to what we want to do. Okay, ongoing financial literacy with the, with the, with the kids. Um, HR department is involved, financial planners. The conversations with grade and 11 and 12 learners around CV, interview skills, and so on. Then this is a big big one of mine that I really want to do, and um, we've already earmarked the furniture from FNB donations, is to upgrade the staff room. We've secured a, FNB had a library incentive, and they only had 20 spaces nationally. You had to put in your motivation, and it had to be a great one for you to get that 10,000 rands for the upgrade of the school library. Then the, um, the plan for the school hall is where we are going to go out 
en masse, and we're going to do crowdfunding across all digital platforms, social media, radio, print, and we're going to do a flash mob mid a video where the kids are going to tell their story, sitting in the quad, putting little bits together as to why that all is necessary. What are we doing right now? Very exciting um, project, project which we launched, launched just this week on Tuesday at the school. There is an organization called Kalisa Social Solutions and Bridgetown High has been chosen as the pilot school for this in the Western Cape. And only because of my partnership through Partners for Possibility that they have t taken on the school. So what, what is going to happen is similar to the principal and the business partner relationship, we are going to mentor 10 to 15 grade 10 learners over a three-year period, so 10, 11, and 12, where a staff member, not, not just business leaders, ordinary staff members will be matched with the school learner. They're going to be doing 360-degree tests, how they match that learner. And then the opportunity after that as well is where that learner can come into the FNB workforce. So we're very excited about that and that Bridgetown High was chosen. And then, because of Sabri, who introduced us to this college, Star College, which you drive past here, you always just see this building at the back, and not knowing what this facilities was about, they have an amazing, I mean, this, we, we're using their facilities today, they have an amazing hall. The school is just probably about a kilometer or so away from Bridgetown High, and the principal has already given his full-on 100% support that Bridgetown High can use the school hall anytime for their theater productions, for rehearsals, and better than that is also that they become the brother school because Star College has the boys school here and then they have the girls school in Sabran Park. So they're going to become the brother school to Bridgetown High, tutoring the kids. They have Saturday morning sessions here, so I'm, I'm very excited for that. And through this, again, through Partners for Possibility that that was able to, to happen. Why did I get involved? I was a former pupil at Bridgetown High. And often when I say that, people can't believe it because they judge, uh, what I say is don't judge a book by its color because they assume that you're pale face, that you are advantaged, you come from all of that. I was District 6 born and raised. Peninsula Full uh, School Feeding Association was a organization that came and brought the bread and the milk to my junior school. Um, 76 to 80 was was renowned for the boycott era, lots of disruptions. This is me over here. <laughs> um, and, and, and that same, and, and then there's that group, just in case you didn't believe me. Yeah, I was, I was a British and I. And the lady over here, Cheryl Balters, she is currently the deputy head at Bridgetown High. So it shows like she's been there for 30 years now. Um, and the group at, on, on this side is that lot. We got together for a reunion last year. So I'm very proud to be associated to the school. My motivation is to give back and I, I will continue doing that for as long as I can. There's gonna be, it's going to be infinite. And um, because many of the of learners today, they think that they, if they keep flat schooled, the jobs are going to be the shelf packers, the the security guard, and by sharing my story, it's that I was there, I was Cape Flat School, but I'm, today I'm an events manager at FNB. Um, so don't let your history define your destiny, and my mantra, you'll see it on my email signatures, is be the change you wish to see in the world, because we have to stop saying it's someone else's problem, someone else will do it, it's Western Cape Education's department or whatever, we need to be the change, every single one of us. And it's, it takes a small, something very small that makes a difference. My last slide. My clicker. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah. In closing, um, thank you to FNB, to PFP, Mr. Winfogel, for the opportunity to learn, grow, and make a difference in this. Thank you, Nikki, for your guidance and support in this program as our circle leader. And thank you to every single individual. We were a really cool, cool group. And we were saying that we couldn't get a date of this graduation. It just didn't suit everybody all of the time. And then, just the other day, it dawned on us. We are circle 27. Today is the 27th of April. 
It was meant to happen on this day. It was meant to lead us to Star College to, to have that ongoing relationship. And um, yeah, thanks very much, guys. Awesome, awesome group. Last words to Andrew. Yes. Uh, I just want to say uh, again thank you to Pearl. Uh, she's a very committed person and she's a purpose driven. And whenever she walks into the school, she will not only uh, <coughs> speak to me, but she will also engage with the teachers also and, and ask a question or two to the learners as well. Paul, thank you for that. And as I said at the beginning, uh, the reason why uh, 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 I was being asked to be part of this uh, uh, PFP again it was because of Pearl. She insisted that she wants to be part of Bridgestone High and I said thank you. Thank you Pearl for that. Thank you Nikki. So here's to the partnership that will not be parted. <laughs> thank, you, thank you both.